Okay, welcome back to Decrypted Tech. We're going to do something a little different than what we would normally do in our um, uh, reviews. We're going to actually take a look at the AI Suite 2 in a video. There's just so much going on in this application now that it's just difficult to cover it with our normal photograph and textile review. We're still going to have some information for you in the full write-up. That's going to be in the link that you can see right below here. But we just want to give you a little bit more of an in-depth coverage and show you some of the features that are coming with this now. So let's go ahead and start. Normally what you would do is you click this open. Um, if you hit minimize, it's going to push it over to the side of the screen, so we'll get it out here. Now, if you're an overclocker, one of the first places you're going to go is going to be the Turbo V Evo. That's going to get you right in here. It's going to pop up in just a second. You're going to see you have your overclocking profile. Well, this is right now we're running our current overclock, which is going to be 4.8 gigahertz. It's going to bounce back. It's going to readjust itself based on the uh, <clears throat> based on the speed step. So it's going to kick it down to 1600 megahertz. Again, you can do pretty much anything you want here. You can adjust your voltages up and down. Um, you know, we'll kick ours to 3.8. Every time you make a change, it's going to say, "Hey, you know, this is going to affect stability," and that's perfectly fine. You can see you have multiple options here. Your different voltages are going to be down below, and you, of course, have a second page that you can go to. But you also have your GPU boost. This is going to allow you to change the free, uh, IGP uh, frequency as well as the IGP voltage. Now on this last one you have your CPU core ratios. This is going to allow you to adjust per core or per you know uh, groups of cores what the actual ratio is. As you can see here if we adjust this number it's only going to adjust it for core one. And we can click here and it's going to push us over to four cores, three cores, and of course two cores. So that's going to allow us a greater flexibility with overclocking. Perhaps we only want to overclock core zero and one just to make sure we get that 100% all the time overclock, but we want to keep those other two CPU cores at the different clock speed sort of to adjust that performance if we need to use all four cores. Uh, there can be different reasons for doing this. One of the biggest reasons is if you want to just overclock one core, you're going to get a higher overclock than you are trying to push it across all four cores that are here. So you can see that just gives you a lot more leeway than what you're used to in this application. We've seen this in both the um, this level of BIOS in the channel boards as well as in the Republic of Gamers. It's a really nice feature. You also have your auto tuning. You have both fast and extreme. This is going to cover both the GPU as well as the CPU. Right now we have an add-in board so it's not going to overclock this, the GPU but it is going to give us an overclock to our uh, CPU which can be pretty good. When we ran this we were able to get about 4.5 gigahertz. When we did the extreme the fast put us at 4.2 uh, to 4.3. We were actually ran it a couple of different times. Right, moving on, looking at some of the other overclocking tools that we have here. Um, we're going to go to the Digi Plus Power Controls. You have your smart Digi controls here. What's nice about this is that if I want to overclock and I want to get the best, the most out of my power uh, setup on here, all I have to do is click OC Now. It is going to go ahead and make the adjustments for me to the power controls to give me the best potential for overclocking. That's a great feature if you're not familiar with what those settings are and you don't want to tinker around for fear of damaging your board. You also have some other uh, smart CPU power functions here. Uh, you can set it down to 45 watts, which is going to be a reduction in overall power draw, and also 35 watts. This is going to increase your uh, power efficiency. It's going to lower the system speed you know, to make sure that it keeps inside that envelope. It's going to be great if you're looking to be power conscious and also good for people who like to sort of underclock their systems. Right, you can also just go straight back to defaults. So we'll go back. You do still have your manual controls. So we'll take a look at our CPU power here. Well, actually, this is our memory power here. You can change your uh, DRAM current capability, your thermal controls, as well as your voltage frequency. Right now we have it set for uh, optimize. You know, we can kick it over to extreme, which is going to give us the best performance. But since we're using DDR3-1600 right now, it's not going to give us that much of a benefit. The memory doesn't like to overclock much more over, uh, let's say, uh, you know, 1633. It's not going to get that much higher in frequency, there's, so there's no reason to push this extreme here at this point. But you can see you have your apply, undo. Each one is going to give you your options as well as tell you a little bit about what each of those options uh, gives you. And of course we can move on here. We can actually look at the CPU power controls. This is going to be your load line uh, calibration, which is going to be good to make sure that you're not going to have too much of a voltage drop when you apply a load to this so that you don't lose stability. Uh, IGP, same thing. The current capability, we can push that up here. You can see that we have the CPU at 140. Saw that when we looked at the BIOS. The uh, voltage frequency, we have this set to auto. The spread spectrum is off. We can actually set this ourselves. 
then you have different phase controls, optimize, extreme, manual adjustment. All, each one of these is going to give you a different level, and you'll, you can see that over here as we switch through it. Optimize is going to give you better proficiency, or efficiency. Extreme is going to give you better performance, and then manual, of course, you can set and change those here. Uh, we'll just leave it at standard, which is where we had it. And again, you have that second page, which gives you some other options. You have your thermal control and your power response control, and you can also change the CPU duty. Of course, if you have it on T-Probe, it's going to be the best thermal balance. Extreme is going to be the best current balance. So those are your, going to be your smart digi functions, your DRAM power control, and, and your CPU power control, just to sort of give you a little bit extra tools in the BIOS, or in Windows in this case, to adjust your board for the best performance with your CPU and with anything else you have in it. Now moving down, you can see we're going to go ahead and uh, skip over EPU. We'll talk about that a little later under, under the power draw. Well, actually, we'll go ahead and, and kick into it. EPU is uh, the energy processing unit, and it's going to allow you to adjust your um, performance profile depending upon what you're doing. As we're overclocked right now, the only one we can choose is going to be high performance. You can see here, each one of these is going to give you your option. In the BIOS, you saw a triangle. Here, you have a uh, pentagon. It's going to show you your different options. Tranquility, of course, is going to be sound. Convenience is going to be uh, sort of on-demand performance. Energy saved, you know, that's pretty self-explanatory. And performance and reliability are going to be your speed. How quick is the system going to respond? And reliability is going to be your stability. So you can take a look at your different configurations. What you can do, dynamic power management, turn off the hard disks. We don't recommend ever turning off your hard disks because uh, we've just seen too many instances where things have uh, gone wrong. Um, of course, you know, you just have your different options here, max power savings, auto, these are all going to be for the different types of profiles that you can set up. All right, we'll go ahead and move on to Fan Expert. Now, under the Fan Expert 2, we've talked about this before, you have the option to auto-tune your fans. You just click on the auto-tune, it's going to run, it's going to identify every four-pin PWM fan header that has a fan plugged in. It's going to run it to its max RPMs, it's going to drop it down to its minimum RPMs. It's going to set this up in a profile that's actually going to allow you to adjust these. You'll have silent, which is going to be that lower RPM, standard, which is going to be the mid-range. Turbo is going to be its maximum, and then of course you can just run all your fans at full speed. And you can also take a look here and see what you've got going on. These are you know, things like RPM fixed mode. You can edit the fan name. This is our CPU fan, which we don't have anything on, so you can see that there's nothing here. It says it cannot be controlled because it's disabled in the BIOS. And you really wouldn't want your, uh, well, you might want your CPU fan, but because we're running a self-contained water cooling unit, we don't want ours controlled by the power management here. We want to go ahead and leave that off and allow that pump to run at its maximum capacity. All right, moving on to probe two. Uh, this is going to be where you can set up your sensors, your alerts, uh, temperature, your different thresholds to let you know what's going on. And of course, you can see your different sensors over here. You have your fans, your CPU fan, the CPU fan optimi uh, op optional, that's going to be our second fan. And then you have the motherboard temperature, CPU temperature, and of course all your different voltages here. So we'll go ahead and click through these, your preferences, your alert. This is going to be a log that you can look through. Uh, you have a sensor recorder, which we found very useful for monitoring the temperature and the motherboard temperature across uh, as we were actually using the board in, in different applications just to see what we have going on. So you can see here it's just going to monitor it and going to let you know where your spikes are. If we were to run something like let's say we were to turn on HyperPi here we'll just run the one meg. Alright as this kicks up you'll see when this when the polling interval comes up which is set to five seconds it'll actually show the CPU temperature go up a little bit as well as the motherboard. So there you can see that we spiked up for just a couple of seconds there. So it's nice to actually record this and see what's going on behind the scenes while you might be gaming or running something else. Sure, so you have fan speed, you can do a history record, this allows you to actually record this. Your minimum interval of course is five seconds and your record duration you can set it all the way down to one hour. So that's great for doing something uh, sort of archival. Then we'll take a look at AI Charger. This is uh, going to be a USB 3.0 fast charging experience. You can basically plug in something into that USB 3.0 port and get uh, sort of a fast charge. Um, it says three times the speed. We haven't plugged anything into it yet to see how that works. But we do plan to uh, plug in our uh, 
Galaxy Nexus to see exactly how quickly it can charge that, especially while it's running, as we noticed that that's a little bit difficult to charge if you have everything going there. So we'll be turning that on and let you know exactly what the time is. You have your basic USB charge, it's going to be USB 2.0. So, but there's nothing plugged in right now, so it's not going to have that uh, that function. And of course, you have your USB 3.0 boost, which we've talked about before on other uh, boards from ASUS. And here you can see we've run our uh, Kingston DT HyperX, which is USB 3.0 device, and we've got it set in SCSI mode. Uh, we're not able to put it in the, which is actually in turbo mode, we're not able to put it in the UASP mode right now because that the controller that's in there just doesn't support it. And one of the last ones is going to be the network eye control. This is going to show you the different programs that you have running and allow you to set up your profile. For example, um, let's say we want to do Punk Buster and we want to put it up here. So we're going to take that and we're just going to push, just highlight it, oh, hold on, highlight it, and put it up there. So now this is going to be normal. You can see you have high, low, and we can actually change this between high, low, and normal. You can also put it on a schedule if we want, and have it only be, have that access or this capability during a certain time period. It's a pretty nice and very visual quality of service control function that works with the onboard network card. Um, this one has the Intel LAN, so it's going to be a pretty good experience, as well as the, uh, it does have a Qualcomm wireless card. And you can run that for either one. Right now, we're, we're primarily running this on the Intel card here, so you can see that's going to be the one that it's going to be attached to. So, you can set up different user profiles, all of that. It's just a pretty nice feature. Of course, you have your monitors. We can change that over here. It's going to be on the side, CPU frequency. You have your update function, system information. So you have system information. You can see motherboard, CPU, SPD. So it's not refreshing and picking up our memory right now. But then, of course, you have settings. So, again, the AI Suite 2 has just become much more functional and giving you a lot more options to run with than what we've seen in the past. It's a very nice utility, and it gives you a lot of broad things. It's not just about overclocking. It's also about managing and monitoring and, and adjusting different functions of the board, including, as you saw, you can get into doing networking and get into just updating your motherboard, including drivers, not just the BIOS. So if we click here and we do update, we can look at not only a BIOS, but we can look at other files and options that are available on ASUS's FTP servers once this loads. And you can see right here it's going to be BIOS uh, for the most part. You can also change your uh, logo, which is going to be your boot logo. So if we wanted to throw a logo up here, we could and do it very easily just from this interface here. Whereas a lot of other ones require, we've seen where it you know, requires a couple of different things, booting from a USB key, flashing this. So you can change the boot logo from a downloaded, uh, of a downloaded BIOS file, but this is not going to update. Or you can change the one that's already on there. And then of course you have your USB BIOS flashback, which we've talked about before. It's a great utility. This can actually download um, new BIOSes and put them on a USB key for you to update. So there you have it. This is going to be the AI Suite 2 on the ASUS P8Z77-V motherboard. It's going to be very similar to other boards around the uh, in the channel lineup. You're going to have the same you know sort of black look to it, as well as all of these options on some of the lower boards, such as the Dash M Pro. We did not see the network eye control on the Dash V Deluxe and on the Dash V Premium. You're going to have additional features that'll show up. This is a good overview of what you get with this uh, utility. Again, it's a great utility because it doesn't just cover overclocking, but has a lot of other options even for your average user. As always, if you like this video, go ahead and click on the like button. Be sure to share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel so you can stay up to date with the news and reviews we have for you.